Mayresh Joshi of, uh, is uh, with us now on the show. Mayresh, thank you very much uh, for joining in. Wanted to get your thoughts in on Asian pains. Reported numbers a while back, the stock has moved to the day's low, down close to about 3.5%. Uh, just for the benefit of our viewers, Asian Paints reported a miss on the top line. The street was anticipating a 5% top line growth. The company reported flat revenue growth. And the problem is the volumes in the decorative business. Their mainstay came in at 6%, lower than street expectations of 7 to 8%. And the value growth was zero which basically means despite a 6% volume growth, the value growth was flat, indicating that there may have been discounting or the product mix may have been a bit inferior. Margins, profits bang in line with street expectations. Mayurish, what did you make of Asian Paints? Because it's been an underperformer, but um, does this um, you know, further dampen the mood when it comes to Asian Paints? Uh, afternoon, Reema. Possibly, yes. Uh, I think two factors. One, as you rightly pointed out, uh, the volume growth, which came in at 6%, uh, tad a bit lower than what the street was expecting at 8 to 9 or percent. Uh, and therefore, the kind of expectation that one really had uh, in terms of a, a reasonable volume growth coming through aided by price as well. I think both these elements are probably missing at this juncture. Having said that, if you probably read the management commentary, erratic monsoons and lack of demand is something that they've pointed out to very, very categorically. Uh, how will Q3 and Q4 play out? Because Q3, Q4 will mean the beginning of a festive season. Uh, but what we have seen so far in terms of a lot of commentaries uh, surrounding consumption as a theme and some expectations that rural demand would come back very, very strongly in the second half with deficient trains that uh, have probably occurred throughout the country at this juncture. Rural discretionary spending might be on a feeble note. Uh, which probably means that it might get pushed back in terms of discretionary spends uh, as far as semi-urban and rural areas are concerned. Uh, uh, so I think the management commentary, specifically that call is going to be extremely important. Uh, but the volume number, uh, which missed street expectation, and again, crude prices, which are largely uh, a tad bit higher on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, will put further pressures in terms of margins uh, without the ability of the company to probably pass them through in lieu of weak demand. Uh, valuations also are not uh, cheap, even at this juncture for Asian pains. Uh, so I think uh, a, a, a reasonably soft set, along with soft commentary, is probably what is dampening uh, the stock and the underperformance might continue. Okay, all right. Uh, hi, Mayuresh. Good afternoon. I just want to clear it to our viewers, my co-anchors, as well as my, uh, you know, director, that we didn't go shopping together. <laughs> it's just a coincidence that we have these checks on. <laughs> but uh, tell us, uh, what about Sizzlon? You know, that's a stock that a few days ago, if you wanted to buy it, you couldn't buy it. It was going circuit to circuit. Uh, and, you know, prospects are good, but should you be getting in at 31? Have you missed the bus or do you think there's further upside for someone who wants to invest, say, for the next few years? So, Nigel, again, a clarification on my side as well. The two occasions that we won this shirt, and, and it was not intentional at all, 14th October, because I just saw in the chat, as I saw your shirt, uh, that is when Nifty bottomed out at around 17200 at that juncture, and around March when the Nifty bottomed out. So, I think it's a good sign that we are wearing this shirt. We'll, 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 take, any, we'll take any good omen, Mayuresh. You know, if you say that's a good omen, you want me, I, may, I can wear it tomorrow. So, we'll see you on the show tomorrow. But tell us, what about this lot? <laughs> So coming coming back to uh, Suzlon, yes, I think the kind of renewables uh, and the entire intent that the government has in terms of push uh, and wind energy in particular, uh, Suzlon, Inox Wind have been big beneficiaries to a large extent. Uh, the tariff revisions uh, that have probably happened uh, uh, are a good sign for these companies because what probably transpired between 2017 and 22, five years uh, before this financial year, I think the tariffs were uh, muted. Uh, input costs were significantly higher and therefore I think there was no way that uh, wind energy companies were going to make any sort of money and a lot of companies did shut down. But with a lot of orders expected to come their way, a lot of cleaning up on the balance sheet that has probably happened and expectations in terms of the interstate transmissions and the tariff itself uh, will probably mean better numbers as orders come in and execution happens uh, from a balance sheet perspective. So I think things are looking up uh, for both these energy stocks, uh, Suzlon and Inox Wind. Uh, Anybody holding on mm. can definitely hold on to this. Okay. Gentlemen, maybe you're checking the right boxes, right? If I could <laughs> carry on with that joke. Maybe checking the right boxes. Let's see. If uh, if that uh, good luck charm works again, then I'm going to remember the date as well. <laughs> By the way, uh, it already seems to be working for the small cap market, uh, Mayuresh. I'd have to say that. Let me just put out some stocks. It seems like we're living in two different markets. Check out what's happened to Prestige Estates in the last couple of minutes. I mean, that stock surging 5 5.5%. 5 
Prashant mentioned Angel One earlier. It's also up about five percent. Sonata Software, yes, it had good numbers. Look at that move on prestigious. It's absolutely astounding. Sonata has now almost reached a ten percent gain. Uh, the Sera Sanitary Wear, which is up about three three and a half percent. Prism Johnson, twelve percent. The way I'm reading the Bechter's Foods. I mean, today we had uh, poor numbers from West West Side. Look at Bechter's Foods. 10% up on Bechter's food right now. So it seems like I'm talking about two different markets, Mayuresh. There's a large cap, nifty, sulking, nursing that uh, 250 point drop. And I don't know what's quite happening in the small cap universe, your sense. Oh, absolutely. I think the, the maximum pain that was inflicted, uh, Surabhi, the last four to five sessions was in the mid cap and small caps. And that is where the maximum enthusiasm has been uh, from a lot of HNIs, uh, retail investors as well, trying to find the next multi-baggers. And it has done them justice because in the last six months, I think this index has touched all-time highs and given stupendous returns uh, across spaces. Uh, but at this juncture, again, I think uh, a large element on how markets are placed, how we are looking at uh, markets at markets with India. I think a lot of markets are seeing pressure both in terms of earnings. Uh, India, a little bit more unique in terms of both macros and micros. Uh, we are still holding out on most parameters and therefore I think the enthusiasm is coming back very, very strongly for the small cap and the mid cap universe, largely for the small cap, even mid caps are probably down at this juncture as we speak. I think a lot of the index selling that might probably happen might happen at the index level and therefore the enthusiasm might get drawn to small caps at this juncture. But I think we are in a wait and watch mode. I think we'll just like to wait and watch how the markets and what global events probably happen over the next few days before we start initiating some calls onto the product markets. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> Mayresh, uh, a few other names uh, which have seen very strong recoveries, right? Uh, we were talking about BSC. JSW Energy has recovered from 9% yeah. from the day's low. Uh, you know, Sonata Software, I think we had the management with us early on before markets opened. That's up 9% from the day's low. Uh, Sundaram Finance is up uh, 8% from the day's low. Gujarat Florochem, some 8% from the day's low. So, you know, there is a fair bit going on. Any uh, any of these uh, strike a chord uh, in your universe? So, JSW Energy, Prashant, uh, looks very interesting because what is really transpiring in terms of the renewables uh, uh, gaining a lot of traction in terms of their overall capacity is 9,900 uh, megawatts. A large part of that component will also come into renewables. Uh, and to a large extent, the kind of numbers that one really expects to come through for the first half itself, uh, the generation that they've probably done, both in terms of the thermal and the renewable assets, have been quite stupendous. Margins have held up pretty well. Net debt to equity around 1.4 times. Uh, so I think that's very, very reasonable in terms of the CAPEX uh, and the kind of uh, uh, committed CAPEX that they've probably done. Uh, with very few CAPEX or uh, expectations of uh, spending happening over the next few quarters, which means as numbers start flowing through, both in terms of the tariff revisions that you've probably seen, and the overall leverage played on the balance sheet, uh, I think cash flow improvement should be very, very obvious. So I think JSW Energy is somebody holding on, should hold on. Midcap IT is surprisingly holding out. Uh, a lot of companies have reported decent set of numbers and therefore the expectations in terms of reasonable order wins coming their way, a large part of the wage hikes uh, largely gestated by these companies as well. And with US data points holding up, uh, the spending specifically in terms of both cloud computing, AI, data center spending would continue, which means this one to 10 billion kind of spends would largely continue having no pressures, uh, apparently at least as we speak right now, both in terms of pricing as uh, far as decision making is concerned. Uh, so I think Midcap IT and uh, JSW Energy probably out of the list that you mentioned probably look a little bit more interesting. Mayuresh, thank you very much uh, for joining in.